After this little boy, Calvin, ate 180 candies for lunch, the doctor fainted when he saw his brain scan. Calvin's family was not a happy, perfect family. Although it hadn't always been like that, things just went south all of a sudden and his parents started having arguments that only got worse with each passing day. Each night, they said mean things to each other and went to bed angry. Soon enough, they stopped sleeping in the same bedroom. Whenever Calvin was around, his parents, Steve and Karen, acted as if nothing was wrong, but the little boy was smart and he always sensed the tension between them. One day, while playing in the yard, Calvin heard his parents screaming. They were so loud that their neighbors down the street could hear them too. This made Calvin devastated, but what could a 12-year-old possibly do? So he just sat on the stool in the garden, hoping they would stop fighting. After a while, they stopped screaming. Just then, Calvin heard someone bang on the front door. Then a few minutes later, Stephen came out of the house, walked toward Calvin and ruffled his hair. Then he said, we are out of milk, so I will run over to the store at the corner to get some. I will be back soon, buddy. The man waved at Calvin as he got into his car and drove off. Calvin didn't even look at his dad. He was busy bouncing his ball. The little boy didn't suspect a thing. If he had, maybe he could have persuaded his dad not to leave. That's what he would keep telling himself later on. After Steve left, that was the last time his family ever saw him. The man probably got angry after the argument with his wife and he felt he couldn't take it anymore, so he left his family behind. Steve's sudden disappearance took a toll on Calvin's mental health. He became hot-headed and troublesome. One moment he was happy and the next minute he was moody. His mother, Karen, bore the brunt of his bad behavior. She did everything she could to curb her son's waywardness. She talked to him, scolded him and grounded him but nothing worked. One Tuesday, while Karen was working at her computer, her phone rang. It was Calvin's principal and what he told Karen left her trembling from head to toe. He told Karen that her son had gotten into a fight at school and left the other student with a broken nose. A frightened Karen quickly jumped into her car and raced to the school. The angry parents of the other boy were already there. Karen apologized to them and the school for her son's behavior and she promised that it would never happen again. Only two weeks before that incident, Calvin's teacher had complained for the 100th time about Calvin's bad manners. Calvin would often bully his classmates and disturb the class. He also said the meanest things to anyone who tried to talk him out of his troublesome ways. The school officials were also fed up with Calvin's behavior and when the kid injured his classmate, they felt it was the height of it, so they suspended him for a week. When Karen and her son got home, she tried her best to make Calvin see how awful his actions were, but he didn't even care to listen to her. That night, the thoughts of her one sweet and happy little boy, who had suddenly become feisty, crushed her, and she cried herself to sleep. The next day, Karen gave Calvin a list of things to do since he wouldn't be at school, but Calvin was displeased with it. As he did his task, he grumbled, distracting his mother who was at work on her computer. Hey baby, can you keep your voice down? You're making me lose focus, Karen said, but Calvin shouted even more. At this point, Karen had it up to her neck. At this vulnerable moment, a thought struck her, so she got up and rushed to the nearest grocery store. Little did she know she would deeply regret what she was about to do. On getting to the store, Karen bought a pack of melatonin gummies. Once home, she saw her son in the living room, so she snuck into his room. She headed to his bedside table and replaced the candies in his candy jar with melatonin gummies, about 180 of them. You see, melatonin when ingested induces drowsiness, so Karen knew Calvin would become less energetic and out of control when he'd taken them. That means he would finally be able to concentrate on our work. Perfect, right? Um, not really, because what Calvin would do next would turn not only his world upside down, but his mother's too. Karen returned to her desk and she asked Calvin to go into his room and study. It wasn't long before Calvin reached for his jar of candy and he popped a few into his mouth. Yummy, this tastes different and much better, he thought. He popped another handful and then another till he had eaten all 180 melatonin gummies. About 10 minutes later, he started feeling dizzy and uncomfortable. Meanwhile, in the living room, Karen was typing away on her keyboard and, of course, she was enjoying the quiet atmosphere. 
However, 30 minutes later, she became uncomfortable with the silence. The Calvin she knew wouldn't stay quiet for 30 minutes. Was he up to no good again, she wondered, and decided to check on her son. What she would see would make all the hairs on her skin stand. On getting to his room, Karen couldn't believe her eyes when she saw Calvin lying on the floor. A deep fear suddenly engulfed her. Baby, is this one of your pranks? She asked in a trembling voice as she rushed towards him. She checked for a pulse and discovered he was still breathing, but he wasn't responding to his name. Just then, she looked at his table and saw that his candy jar was now empty. Oh my god, no, what have I done? Karen muttered. Not even in her wildest dreams did she expect her son to eat all 180 melatonin gummies at once. She heard voices in her head calling her a terrible mother. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry, Karen wept. She quickly reached for her phone and called 911. Within 10 minutes, an ambulance arrived and Calvin was rushed to the hospital. Once there, Karen couldn't bring herself to tell the doctors what she did. So she told them that Calvin ate all the candies and she found him slumped on the ground. As a result of this, the doctors found it difficult to diagnose what was wrong with the boy. The doctors noted that Calvin wasn't conscious of his environment and that he also appeared somnolent. They admitted the boy and carried out an MRI scan on him. Two days later, when the results came out, one nurse took them to the doctor in charge of Calvin's case. But as soon as the doctor saw it, his eyes popped open. Oh my god, not again, he groaned and fainted. You see, that week this doctor had seen several cases of children with saddening conditions. And when he saw that Calvin's results showed he had a tumor, he felt overwhelmed and passed out. However, when he woke up and looked at the results again, he noticed that the surname on the results was wrong. As it turned out, the nurse mixed up Calvin's MRI results with another teenager who had the same name. When they finally found Calvin's real MRI scan, the results showed that there was nothing wrong with his brain. This left the doctor even more baffled and he told Karen they would have to do some blood tests. What? Blood tests? Karen froze. At that moment, she knew it was time to come out clean, so she told the doctor the whole melatonin gummy story. Now that the doctor understood where the problem was coming from, he carried out the necessary tests and soon enough, he diagnosed Calvin with hypermethioninemia, a condition in which there is excess methionine in the blood. You see, the human body naturally produces melatonin which helps to regulate sleep patterns. However, having excess melatonin in the body, as in Calvin's case, means the person would be abnormally drowsy and disoriented. And that's exactly what happened to Calvin. Luckily for the teenager, he wasn't on any other drug at the time, as a mixture of melatonin and some drugs could be fatal. After proper care, Calvin's health improved, and a few days later he was discharged. However, the doctors told Karen that his sleep pattern would be disorganized for a while, but should return to normal in a few days. Calvin was more than happy to return home, and his mom never had the courage to tell him what truly landed him in the hospital. However, she planned to tell him when he'd be much older and able to handle the truth. Karen learned a great lesson and she vowed never to repeat her mistake. She also learned to be more patient with her son. As for Kelvin, after the incident he became much calmer and obedient and he started getting along with his mother. I wish them a life filled with love and happiness. What do you think about this story? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. See you next time.